then calm your ass down. Like, why are you feeding her eggs? For what? For what? For what? Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Comfort. Thank you so much for being with me today. I really do appreciate you. As you can see from the title, it is Challenge Recap Day. Y'all, we are in episode 10. Like, we're getting through, we're making it through, we're making it through the season. So we're about to go ahead and recap what happened in episode 10. And y'all, God, I mean, I can't lie. I'm not, I'm, I'm not happy. Okay, I'm not happy. Like, a lot happened. I mean, not unpredictable, but there was some shade, very random shade being thrown by one of my favorites, CT. You know, the switch up happened with TJ. So we're gonna get into all of that. First, make sure you go ahead and subscribe for more reviews and recap videos. Hit that subscribe button, go ahead and like, comment, and also hit the post notification bell so you'll be notified every time that I post a new video. And let's get right into it. So first, we get into to the house, right? And remember, Corey and Bettina are coming straight off of their win against Jeremiah and Amber. Unfortunately, Amber had to go home. If you missed that recap, go ahead and hit that right here. And basically, Corey is talking to Nelson about the fact that everybody voted him in, people that he thought that had his back or people that he's been playing this game with, people that he felt like he was loyal to. He felt like they just threw him to the wayside and he's like, that does not sit well, sit well with me, bro. Like that bothers me that irritates me you know and Nelson's basically trying to calm him down like look it cannot be the whole house against us like we not doing that TYB that old school uh team young buck stuff that we were doing where it's everybody against us we didn't win that way right so we need to calm down of course like no nah, I'm definitely coming for people's heads I'm definitely coming for people's heads he's so he names people that he's coming for he says he's coming for Kyle that's not unexpected he's coming for Ashley that's not unexpected he says he's coming for Amanda like he he He's just basically everybody that had anything to do with him getting voted in or even chiming up or chipping in him getting voted in. He's trying to come for them. And Nelson is like, bro, like, relax. Like, just chill out. Cool out. Come down, please. We're not strong enough. So then we pan to CT and Tori. And basically they're talking about they got Amber out of the game and Amber was champ last season and all of that, right? And y'all, y'all know I'm team CT all the way, right? This put a little chink in his armor for me. I still love CT. It's still probably Team CT because the rest of these people like are too inconsistent for me and I just need consistency in my life, you know? But CT gonna say out of nowhere, unprovoked. He's laying on the bed and after Tori's like, you know, Amber's a beast and they got her out of here and da 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 CT gonna say, well, Amber can't do anything except for run. Sir, let me just address you here because I already addressed it on the challenge Instagram page. I might insert my comments here. That running, Amber ran circles around you, okay? And yes, you can do puzzles and you're great at everything right CT doesn't really need anybody to win but in a partner situation Amber was the best partner that you could have had what other partner were you gonna have Casey was last already before she got hurt so that hurt thing is not an excuse and everybody else was lagging behind okay Amber ran circles around you you had to catch up and if we recall when you were partnered because some people in the comments were trying to say that oh running isn't a big deal in the challenge it's about the puzzles da, da, da. oh running is a huge deal. running is the most major deal a lot of people have not lost because of a puzzle most people have lost because of the running most people haven't even made it to like a next checkpoint because of the running because of getting injured right amber made it through that and if we recall ct as amazing as you are and at your peak ct when you were partnered with god rest her soul dm and y'all had to climb up that damn mountain who gassed out right before they could have made first place who cost dm that final um it was you ct and why was that because of running so respect yourself everybody needs to respect themselves in this situation this amber like i i, I really don't understand the amber punch back thing I don't know if it's because she's sweet if it's because she's little if it's because she's I, I, I don't know I really don't know what it is but like it needs to stop like knock it the hell off especially you she's the reason that you won okay because if they would have relied on your running you wouldn't have made it to that puzzle a lot of people would have sped up and you would have been second third Leroy probably would beat you Corey's Corey was well, second Corey would have beat you like please please so just like you know I don't know he was in the bed sleepy looked he kind of sounded drunk so I don't know if he was drunk or what but I'm just 
just going to let that go. But I just felt like I needed to address that because even my faves can get it. Y'all saw how it was with Esther. I don't, I'm not, I'm not tolerating nonsense, even if you're my favorite. Okay. So just everybody respect themselves. Thanks, Chris. All right. Then we pan to Bettina and Priscilla and they're basically talking about why they're in the game, right? Like why they're playing and why it means so much to them. You know, everybody has their reasons for being in the game and for wanting to win the million dollars, right? But Tina is talking about, you know, she comes from a small town. She's a small town country girl and she really wants to do this for the people from small towns that people who feel like, you know, they don't believe in themselves, that she really wants to give them hope and she really wants to win this, right, for her hometown. And Priscilla talks about her mom and the fact that her mom is one of two siblings out of, I believe she said six siblings, the rest of her mother's siblings have passed on. So the weight of taking care of, of her cousins really weighs on her mom and she does so much for her and her family and she really just wants to take that pressure off of her. If you are an immigrant, if you're a child of Nigerian or any African parent, you understand the weight of that. You understand that like that relief off of your parents would be so much and everything that they do for us. Like she got really emotional, understandably so. I feel you girl. I get it. And like absolutely I'm sure your mother is proud of you. So I really really related to that. Like that was it was nice to see that perspective to know that she's not just you know it's fine if you're playing for just you know whatever but like like Gabo's reason just to buy cool stuff but like you know when it's really meaningful it also is really cool too so then so then y'all mm, the expected and unexpected happens now if y'all pan back if y'all remember when Logan and Big T first started flirting or whatever aka Logan flirting with Big T and Big T like giving into his wins aka Logan making Big T eggs and feeding it to her like he was her man aka Logan trying to wrestle Big T and taking her outside to teach her different moves like her man would aka Logan coming on strong and Big T being a little bit hesitant but then finally giving in similar to what most guys do when they just want to you know they want to get your attention they want to get you and then when they once they've got you to a certain point they tend to pull back all of a sudden when you weren't even giving them rhythm in the first damn place right y'all I'm triggered okay and I'm sure any woman out there who has not given a man the time of day minding your business minding your beautiful black goddess melanated business right living your life being the sweetie pie that you are and then for some man to come and disturb your peace right disturb your you were enjoying life living your life like a single living your life like it's golden you didn't ask nobody to come and fraternize with you but then they come right and you're trying to play it cool you're trying to play it chill but they keep coming on strong aka making you and feeding you eggs like they're your damn husband like it's honeymoon okay right y'all logan gonna say he wants to tell big t that he likes her he loves her as a friend but that you know he wants to only enjoy a little bit of the honey is what he's telling i can't remember who he's telling that to which is also disrespectful that you're telling somebody else on a whole ass reality show like she's not gonna see that but whatever that you know basically he just wants to be friends with her in the game he doesn't want it to be too serious which okay that's fine understandable it's a challenge house then calm your ass down like why are you feeding her eggs for what for what for what y'all the, the problem that i have is you can have fun right establish you're having fun but like why are you coming on so strong like you're treating me like your girlfriend then when i start wanting to act like your girlfriend then it's like whoa 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 like to me logan is just like a playboy whatever like spencer kind of guy because even when he was on the aftermath and on that on when we when they first showed them canoodling or whatever right big t was still trying to play it cool and he was over there <laughs> if big t was over there would you make out with her right now uh-huh yay say yeah boy shut the hell up okay like just uh I just don't like that. And, you know, Big T is so sweet and nice. And, you know, not to say that she, you know, can't do some shenanigans, but I just, I, I just, I just don't like that. I just feel like that is sending mixed signals to somebody and then acting like they're the one coming on too strong. You're the one that came off too strong, like shorty, like baby boy. You were the one that were do was doing the most. Like you were doing a lot. You don't need to, even if you want to make her the eggs, must you be feeding them to her? Like she's your wife? Calm down. It's, you know, it's a lot. But I, I also know that sometimes European men are kind of like, just like, eh. La, 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 la. I'll treat everybody like they're my girlfriend, like they're my wife. And but it's just like like they just live in vacation mode. You know how you go on vacation and maybe um you meet a guy and you guys hang out, but then it's like it's understand it's like it's vacation mode. Like you're gonna go back to your regular life. Like that's kind of how they operate. Like we can be in love right now, but it's like okay. Yeah, basically that is what um he says. And basically the way that they frame it, the way Logan phrases it because they pan back to Big T telling him the story about, you know, Oedipus, the Greek story, you know, the Oedipus complex 
where he marries his mother and you know so gross and he's just looking at her like she's a crazy person but it's like first of all you should know the story like educate yourself that wasn't weird of her to tell you and he's saying basically that he just wants a little bit of you know dibble dabbling but he doesn't want the whole thing like he doesn't want to be too serious and she wants to be too serious so he's going to cut off the kissing and cuddling and that they're just going to be friends from then on they're just going to be friends from then on and so I just you know men out there like if somebody's minding their business right and you know that you don't want anything serious and you can see that this person is clearly falling for you like like stop it stop please stop acting like you have no idea um, um I just you know I don't I like her in a different way like sorry you should have been liking her in a different way before like leave her the hell alone so annoying and so triggering but whatever so then we move to everybody else chilling right and they get this big alert that <laughs> And it is time for the daily challenge. And remember, TJ still left them not knowing what is going to happen. Are they still partners? Are they still solo? Which is what I thought. And so they get to the challenge. And sure enough, TJ tells them solo from here on out. Most of the people are happy. Priscilla is not because she feels like it puts a target on her back. Because she was under the radar. But then she made herself very well known after that, you know, let the games begin that she pulled. So she's like, there's not going to be a partner to protect me. Like, it's going to be open season on my ass is what she says basically right so they get to the challenge of the day so the daily challenge is basically there's the y'all this daily challenge is a lot like it's basically like a mini final low key so basically what they have to do is they have to run to these stones where some sledgehammers are buried they have to dig up the sledgehammers get the sledgehammers over uh, and run with the sledgehammers over to three different checkpoints right and you can choose which checkpoints that you want to use in order to get to the next checkpoint. One where you have to use binoculars to look from a distance and look at some numbers to unlock a safe. There's one where you have to scratch some numbers on board in order to get the numbers to open up the safe. Basically the point is to be able to open up your safe, get a gem out of the safe, run over to a platform. There's three different platforms of three different colors. There's a sapphire platform, an emerald platform, and a ruby platform. You put your gem on whatever platform that you choose and then that platform now whoever's on that platform with you you would now form a team right and then once you form that team each team has to then compete and take their sledgehammers over to um, rescue their another gem the gem that is of their platform sapphire emerald or ruby and they have to do it by basically smashing the cinder blocks and using them to weigh down this the scale freeing opening it up so that they can free the emerald and whoever does that the fastest wins the daily challenge and will then become the agency so basically they're competing to be in teams right so y'all they're going through this people are having a hard time but Tina's having a hard time getting her sledgehammer out finally the first person to get to the platform is Nelson Nelson gets over to the platform and then I think Corey's there shortly after him and everybody just kind of go one, goes one after the other person that has the most trouble is Logan he chose the option of using the binoculars to look at the numbers he can't get the number he can't see what the number is so he's there last basically which I feel like personally is karma for the way you trying to play big T like you know I'm just saying then he finally he just basically starts trying numbers um he finally he finally gets the safe open and so he starts running then he gets hurt his ankle twists or something happens to his leg he's like oh no I'm like shouldn't have been playing with people's feelings and maybe your legs wouldn't be played with now nah, I'm just yeah so he gets hurt and so basically everybody gets to the platform so then the teams are formed okay so team emerald is Devin Casey Emmanuel Josh Tori and Nani so on team sapphire it is CT Ed Nelson Amanda, Ashley, Bettina. Then on Team Ruby, it's Corey, Priscilla, Big T, Logan, right? Yeah, those are the teams. So all in all, you know, Devin is the mastermind basically that helps Team Emerald win. So they end up winning. They are now the agency. So since they're the agency, they have to go in deliberation and everyone has to basically, I guess, plead their case to Team Emerald. And Team Emerald gets to choose one woman, because it's a female elimination day, to go 
into the layer to compete for the million dollars, right? And he doesn't say how the other teammate will be chosen. So y'all, they get back to the house. Everybody, Emmy's crying. Oh yeah, I forgot. Emmy is also on um, Corey's team, Ruby. Y'all, Emmy's crying. I mean, that's not new. So we get back to the house and you know, after everybody's kind of dusted off their wounds, they're kind of talking about what to expect, right? For the deliberation. So Team Emerald is kind of talking about who they feel like they should throw in. So first thing that comes up is Emmy. And they're like, are we going to throw Emmy in? They're like, well, she's good at physical things when she has somebody to kind of guide her. But without guidance, she's not good at the game. So it likely would not hurt us to have her stay here because she'd probably just drama herself out of the game, right? So they're like, I don't, and she'll do whatever we say as the vet. So Emmy's not really an issue. Then they bring up Ashley. And um, Nani is like, I feel like Ashley is, is very chaotic. You never know where you stand with her. She could have a meltdown at any time. You have to walk on eggshells. She does not trust her. So Nani's like, she definitely wants to throw Ashley down. Like she does not want Ashley to stay in the game. And also she's a champ, right? And then they bring up Priscilla and they're like, why not send a rookie down there? Especially the rookie that messed up everybody's game and kind of put us in this predicament to even have to put vets in, right? Then we pan to Big T talking to Priscilla about her situation with Logan and you know, how she likes him. And like, you know, I guess they had the conversation. Her and Logan had the conversation that they're just gonna be friends. And Big T is basically talking about, yeah, you know, I'm gonna miss us, you know, cuddling and that kind of attention and closeness because I just, I got used to it in the house, you know, but mm, like she takes it really well. She doesn't, she's not too butthurt about it, which is great. And I'm like, yes, girl, do not be butthurt about it. Who cares? Like, please, please, like, yeah, he would be so privileged to be with you. So then we get to the deliberation, right? And Devin is power drop. Basically the setup of the deliberation is that the agency who is Team Emerald gets to choose who goes into the elimination. What woman goes into the elimination because it's a woman elimination day. And then the other opponent, TJ hadn't told them yet how that person would get chosen. Devin gives this speech about, well, this is your time to plead your case just to let you know we haven't made any decisions. So if you don't plead your case, don't be surprised if your ass is down there, right? Like you are not nobody's daddy. You are not nobody's dictator. Like just simmer down, mon cher. Relax, okay? So basically he's like, plead your case now, now or never, right? Speak now forever, hold your peace. So Priscilla, you know, pleads her case and basically gives the, you know, I'm a rookie. I don't know nothing. I'm not that great. You would want to keep me around spiel. And she also says that I would be beneficial to your game because you would rather have me here instead of a champ, AKA Ashley, right? And then we move to Ashley pleading her case. And Ashley basically says, yes, I'm a champ, but I haven't won in a while. And I don't think I'm better than anybody here. So I think I'm on the same level as everybody. So you guys don't need to be worried about me. Like, let's just all compete basically. Like trying to downplay herself, even though she's been bragging about herself all season. And so Big T says, in the, like in the confessional, like, girl, you know, you age like fine wine. You know, you're still a great competitor. Like nobody's by that. So then Big T um, states her case. And it's basically, Big T and Bettina are both basically like, you know, I don't want to go home right now. Essentially, that's what they say. Like, we understand that it is what it is, but I don't want to go into elimination right now. So then Amanda is like, you know, I have a kid. I don't want to go in. <laughs> like, basically, that's what she says. So then everybody votes. Now, mind you, I feel like the person that gave the best pitch was Priscilla, y'all. She made the most sense. She actually gave logistics. Like, she did a whole thing. But y'all, guess who they voted? They still mad, y'all. They voted Priscilla. They vote in my sis. Priscilla, they vote her in. And it's to be expected, you know, she did mess up their game. She did put a target on her back. It would be the easiest thing to do without ruffling anybody else's feathers, you know? So they end up throwing Priscilla into elimination, right? So then we get down to the elimination. So TJ calls Priscilla down that they voted her in, that he's like, how do you feel? Priscilla's like, look, I understand that I shook up the game, that I ruffled some feathers when I made that move, you know, and I know there's consequences for it and I'm ready to take my consequences and I own the out of it, you know, it is what it is. I'm ready to compete, right? Let's just go. And so TJ's like, all right, bet. So then he says the opponent will be chosen by the person thrown into elimination. So Priscilla got to choose who goes into that elimination against her. Y'all, and Priscilla chooses Ashley to go into elimination. I'm like, girl, like I understand Ashley talks big shit and maybe you haven't really seen her perform and you want to swing big, but this is not a good move. But all in all, Ashley comes down 
Ashley's like, look, you know, I take, I, I have no hard feelings with Priscilla. You know, she's a badass. Like she made big moves. She swung big. I respect her. And I hadn't, I need an elimination win. I haven't won one in a while. So I'm just ready to compete. Let's go. Let's get it right. She takes it really, really well. Like not Ashley like at all. She doesn't freak out. She doesn't melt down. She gives Priscilla a hug. Like great. Okay. Y'all. So basically the elimination is called seek and destroy. And Basically, it is where there are eight tires of different colors buried under the sand, right? And they have to dig up these tires, first stack them up, and then they have to go over to this light visual, basically, and look at the different, memorize the different colors of light because memorizing those colors is the order that the tires need to be put in in order for them to win the elimination. And whoever does that the fastest wins, right? So y'all, oh my God, this is so, so intense. It gets so close. So right before y'all, they're both really, really emotional. Priscilla's talking about how she really wants to prove to herself that she can do this, that she really wants to do well. She wants to make her mom proud. Ashley talks about the fact that, you know, she loves Amanda so much. She doesn't want to leave her here by herself. She wants to, you know, help her win because she's such an amazing person. She's such a good friend. She's an essential worker. She was a nurse during the pandemic. Like she risked her life, her family's life, and she really wants her to win as her best friend and all of that like it's both both really really endearing really sweet right so y'all they start competing so they're going they're going at first it's like neck and neck one and one two and two you know and they both have different strategies for getting the tires out of the sand Ashley's using her whole body and using her hands to basically get the tires out of the sand. Priscilla's using her feet. I don't know who told her to kick and use her feet. Like, I mean, it seemed like a good idea, but I, I, I just, it, I don't know. It didn't, but they were neck and neck. Y'all, then Ashley starts like beasting, right? Ashley uses her whole body. Ashley is just, it's like Ashley is just picking these tires up out of the ground. And Priscilla looks so like she's really, really trying her hardest, but she just does not have the strength and the swiftness, right? To do it, you know, but they're both going, they're both going at one point. Ashley has like six or seven and Priscilla has five. So it's like really neck and neck, y'all. But then Ashley finally gets all of eight, the eight tires on the, stacked up on the pole, right? And then she has to go and memorize the lights. Y'all, this is what really like, it just really frustrated me. And I feel like this should not be allowed because so Ashley goes over and she basically memorizes the colors of the lights, right? And she says it out loud. So then everybody, all of the vets repeat the colors to her. They start singing it like a song. Repeat the colors to her, repeat the colors to her so that she can get it, so she can memorize it and she can come back. So y'all, Ashley's like, oh my God, I can't believe that they're helping me. They really like me. I thought they wanted me out, whatever, whatever. And so basically they help her remember the sequence and then she gets it. And just like that, Ashley wins because the whole, all the vets in the house helped her. And I just feel like, like, I understand it was great for Ashley, like, whoop do whatever. But I'm like, is that, like, can you do that? I thought you, I understand that people can help you, but I didn't know you could, like, give, you can memorize the sequence and all of that. Like, I just, I just felt like that was, that was really an unfair advantage. Like, I don't think that's fair. Like, I really don't think that's fair that people can help you. And you know what I mean? Like, granted, if they, if it would have been the same colors, then I guess it would have helped Priscilla too, but I don't think it was the same colors. I think it was different for both of them. I'm not sure. But y'all, Ashley wins and Priscilla gets sent home, y'all. She, But she is proud of herself. She's like, I really gave it my all. And she really did. She Till the very, very end, she gave it her all. She was tired. She was exhausted. But she did not quit. No matter how far Ashley got, she didn't quit. So girl, I'm sure your mother's proud of you. We the people, we are proud of you. Like, you did really well. So then y'all, TJ, you know, congratulates Ashley on being the winner. She did great in the elimination. And that now she gets to either remain with the team that she's on or she can choose to be on any other team, including the agency. And I was like, oh, 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 what's she going to do? And Kyle is like, oh, bet. Like, so the agency is not exempt. You know, usually the agency is exempt from stuff like that. But no, she can choose to be on any team she wants. She can replace. So on the agency, they're full. They're jam-packed. So she would be able to replace somebody on that team. So Tori's like, no, 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 don't replace me. But all in all, she ends up deciding to stay with Amanda on Team Sapphire with CT, Nelson, Ed, and uh, Bettina. 
And so she stays on her team with Amanda and she's like, I don't want to leave you. You know, they have a really sweet moment. Like it's their, their little sistership thing is really cute. Basically that is the episode you guys. Now let next episode looks crazy. It looks like Nelson and Kyle are about to get into some type of fight, some type of altercation. I don't know how that happened. I thought it was Corey and Kyle that had the issue, but apparently they have issue. I don't know if it has something to do with them being on different teams or what. All right, guys. So that is it for this episode recap. Let me know what you guys think about the vets repeating Ashley's sequence. Like, do you think that was fair? Do you think that they basically cheated to help her win? That that should even be allowed? You know, how do you guys feel about them throwing Priscilla in? Do you think that it was warranted? What team do you think is going to make it? Do you think they're going to stay in team? like just let me know leave me comments below i love to hear from you guys i'll definitely respond and comment back go ahead and like comment and subscribe and hit the post notification bell so you'll be notified when i hit episode 11's recap and i'm so thankful for you guys watching welcome to all of my new subscribers once again my existing subscribers i really really do appreciate you we are close to another milestone and i'll see you next time bye